Let's go, module three. A construction company is contracted to do simple repairs. This involves several tasks and phases, and they have a picture of a Gantt chart. Okay, cool. Identify the two represented. A Gantt dog, a dog, dog. Take it easy. All right, identify the two represented in figure two, which is a Gantt chart, right? Describe the general purpose of the tool um, in the system development life cycle. You want to see that it tracks the tasks to be completed and gives a general time frame for completion before the next task can be done. Yeah, that's essentially a gun chart. The dog name is Lizzie. She doesn't make real noise. She quiet now, she quiet now. I'm going to be the iron wallet out. Let's see if I can finish this off before she start the back again. So chances are it's late in the night and you're watching this past paper video hoping that you get the answers to the past paper that you've been looking for for all this time and you're happy that it actually exists on YouTube. Well, don't leave it up to the YouTube algorithm to show you the rest of um, answers. I have an app that's called Learn It by Make It Simple TT and it has all the past paper answers in chronological order for the past 10 years, maybe 12, depending on the time that you're watching this video. It might have a lot more. The app is called Learn It. Go find it, download it, link will be in the description. And if you want to see the PDF with the actual crap of foot handwriting that I have with the answers, so you could actually scroll through the PDF and look at the answers as it was written. Instead of watching the video, hey, you could do that too. Download the app now. All right, back to the answers. State out each of the following tools can be used by the construction company and indicate the stage of the system development life cycle that applies to the tool. Okay, a prototype. Prototype is used to create a scaled down version of the application to give a general um, overview before for developing the product fully. Something so, scaled down version is a prototype, is a tester, some kind of thing like that should be good. A case tool is, ah, this one kind of weird, right? In the case stage of the system development life cycle, that case tools could be done at different levels. Case tools could be done at the top, it could be done at the bottom. It's very weird. So I think this should be able to accept many different things for case tools, but case tools are computer aided system design. So most of them are used on the deep design phase. A prototype is used in the, um, show each of the following to arrive and indicate the stage of the system development life cycle okay so prototype will be at the implementation phase case will be at the design phase because it helps create a model a system that will be created yeah but case tools could be done all over because a case tool could help you code, a, a case tool could help you debug, a case tool could do all kind of things. So you have to kind of, if you say design phase, then you have to talk about ERD and DFT. If you talk about testing phase, it'll be coming up with tests and whatnot. But that's me thinking a little more COMSA-ish, but in, that's the program development life cycle, but in the IT side of it, most times case tools are using the design. All right, a shopper borrows an online stock, which is like, oh no, oh cool. Uh, yeah, this is the data flow diagram. Now, this is a very like intimidating question because you have to watch this whole data flow diagram. But at the end of the day, they explain the data flow diagram. They show you the whole data flow diagram and then they ask you to name an entity, a process, and a data store. I mean, if that is not cake, I don't know what, what cake is. So an entity would be, first entity, it could be the shopper or the bank, right? So we go with shopper or bank. A process is any one of these things here. Online order, even though they use a rectangle, they shouldn't use a rectangle. It's supposed to be a, a rounded rectangle, but you know, whatever. Shipping and um, card check. A data store could be inventory or what's the other? Customer. Yeah, that's what they tend to do with data flow diagrams in, in IT. They don't make you draw them out because they really don't have time to that and they don't have really enough marks for it. Describe which level of data flow is illustrated. This is a level one, which shows major processes, data flows, and the data stores. Um, state the name of the diagram which will be drawn before this. Before that will be a context level. Yeah. 
because you do the context level and you break it down into all the purpose of the name diagram and be one okay a data flow diagram is to track the movement of data within a system taking account this is not the textbook definition but this is what they look for taken taken into account how the data is changed stored no. how the data is collected processed stored and disseminated yeah all after two marks but just you know, give them the definition of a data flow diagram you know the definition of a data flow diagram all right discovery through characteristics of a well defined algorithm all right precise unambiguous termination um whatever words i forget the other words yeah. rebecca has been asked to write an algorithm to determine the average score obtained by students in an information technology class draw a flow chart to represent rebecca's the average score wow six marks okay start they said to draw the algorithm but i'm kind of writing it out first because that'll make it easier for me to um assume that the score of each student will be entered one at a time and that the user will indicate that there are no more scores to be entered by minus one okay so print enter score read s while score all right any algorithm first eh? it's not equal to minus one do just because it helps me understand how to draw the flowchart better. Even though I know how to draw the flowchart, it probably help. It'll help you all better too. For the people that watch it. Well, it's called equal um, one sum is equal to sum plus s print enter score. Or enter score or minus one to stop. Or minus one to stop. Yeah, print enter score or minus and then after we find that we count no read s and count it's equal to count plus one because you have to keep track of the amount of times that you read it and then n while and then average is equal to sum divided by count and then you print the average is average all right all right so now we can with that our flow chart now all right so your first shape is going to be a oval for start start print enter the value that will be a parallelogram so we will put you inside there fit in all right so print enter the stuff to do start then we're gonna read s so we put the read s there after you read the score now you need to make a decision so you want to say while score is not equal there can you fit yeah while score is not equal to minus one do if the answer is yes i want to do all of these things sum is equal to sum plus s that will be a rectangle i take any sum is equal to sum plus s and you go inside here and then we have to print some stuff which is the same thing that we did before Start up our parallelogram. Go back this same thing, boy. Print enter score or minus one to stop. Yeah, same thing. Da, 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 that's cool. Yeah, good enough. Uh, now we have to read us and then count is equal to count plus one. Count is equal to count plus one will be a rectangle. From here, we're going to look back up to here. And then our next thing will be no. We say average equal to sum divided by count and then we print the average print the average Oof. and then you stop here that's actually a lot for six marks but mm. if you were able to go straight like to the flow chart good for you good for you um if you because what happens sometimes when you try to go when you jump straight into the flow chart you just mess up all right then Ah oh boy, this is where the rubber met the road. Everybody was like, Paradigm? What is a paradigm? I was like, wait, this is madness. I don't understand. Nobody ever taught me this. All right, discuss two programming paradigms for developing software. Give one example of each. All right, so let's go with um procedural. This is the easiest one. 
This one follows a step-by-step -step approach that um, consists of linear lines of code that solve a problem consistently. An example of procedural would be Pascal or C. Paradigm 2 could be object-oriented, uses objects and classes to simulate real life objects and solve problems accordingly. Lizzie, Lizzie, take it easy now. Example Java or C. Right, from there, your next two are um, functional. Functional basically breaks it down into smaller pieces and declarative. Declarative is based on facts and rules. Functional is um, sub routines. Right, functional could be almost anything. But on the syllabus, I think they have this, and then they have prologue. Wait, I think it's prologue and lisp. So lisp is declarative, prologue is functional. One of the two, can't remember exactly. But these programming paradigms, they've been on the syllabus for a while, and you should continue to know them at all times. Right? And when you are done, that is it there. So, I hope that helped you all, and we will see you again. Thank you everybody for coming through. Share it with your friends. Let them cry when they see what they got wrong. I am gone.